Kristen Bartlett and uh, Mike Drucker are Emmy nominees as producers and head writers of Full Frontal with Samantha Bee, uh, which like so many other shows has had to adapt to the COVID-19 pandemic by doing their so shows at a social distance. Uh, so first off, what was the most challenging aspect uh, when the show was ma initially making that switch and you realized that you were gonna be out of the studio for a while? I will, okay, we both probably have different ones. Yeah, um, yeah. For me, I was afraid of dying. <laughs> so, so we're in New York City, we're surrounded by like, sirens nonstop, and we had to put a show on, and I think at the same, like, I would go to bed every night reading the scariest possible article about what coronavirus, coronavirus is and what it could do, and how it was inescapable, so I would go to bed with that and then have to wake up in the morning and put on a show, so that was my personal challenge. Uh, yeah, I wasn't afraid of dying. But uh, I definitely, I live in like a very isolated, no sunlight, one bedroom apartment by myself. And so I was, I think I was helping to make a show while I was slowly losing my mind. <laughs> and um, and, still, we're still doing that. So I'm, there you I'm go. still, I'm still doing that. There's a risk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it might actually help in comedy to slowly lose your mind because I feel yeah. like it opens things up for, uh, <laughs> for, yeah. for humor. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, and, and with uh, with comedy specifically, um, it, the the dynamics of it changes so much when you're dealing with playing to a studio audience versus not doing that. So, like, what were what was kind of the learning curve with uh, trying to kind of recalibrate the show's humor, or or did it even need much recalibration to to adapt? I mean, there's slight recalibration in times in terms of like timing and rhythm, you know, uh, now we're telling jokes that, you know, we move from joke to joke to joke relatively fast, where in the past you'd sort of be like, there's a breath here for the audience to react, or not, um, but usually you have that breath. The first show we had without an audience, we actually, you know, Sam was actually kind of worried because she had been doing the show for years with an audience, and what we did, uh, we came up with this idea to write new jokes that she hadn't seen before, just for that one episode, and surprise her. And that really helped her sort of loosen up on camera because she was like, oh, I'm having fun with this. I don't need to like worry. I don't need to focus on the lack of audience. I can focus on me having fun with it. Yeah. And that's kind of what we've tried to take to the remote shows is trying to make, you know, I wouldn't say that we've like changed our style or where we stand on things, but you know, sometimes we do slightly weirder jokes or we try jokes that like make Sam laugh really hard, but they're not necessarily like always audience pleasers. Um, we, we, we got a little weirder, which I kind of like. Yeah, I think we're getting more hyper specific about the things that we think are funny. And I also think we allow ourselves to go on little tangents here and there that we never would do with an audience. Right. But yeah, I think like the decision or our pitch to, to do um, jokes that Sam had never seen came purely from rehearsals. One of our favorite things yeah. from rehearsals was when Sam would see a joke for the first time and just laugh at us and be super like, what are you guys doing? Right. And so the fact that we were able to share that with the world was the best. Yeah. And, uh, and how has the, the social distance uh, affected, you know, just, just the process of, of writing for the show? Like, instead of a writer's room, now you've got a writer's Zoom, essentially. Uh, like, <laughs> it, does that make things a lot more difficult? It definitely takes more time. Um, and I think some of us, you know, are better at it than others. I think, like, we are all, we all communicate a little differently. Um, we have writer's Zooms and Google Hangouts and writer slacks and every possible medium that we can communicate with we do. Um, I think one of the, the things that I miss is a big writer's room where everybody can pitch tons of ideas and feel comfortable saying whatever's on their mind. I think people are more reserved on Zoom. Um, but yeah, I think like it's been a challenge like changing everything in that way, but we're working through it, I think. And Mike and I have very long marathon, marathon phone calls. I think that's the biggest change. Yeah, tomorrow night we'll probably be on the phone for five to six hours rewriting the script yeah. for next week's show. Yeah, a lot of talking on the phone. <laughs> and, uh, you know, before, you know, the pandemic happened, uh, this was already going to be a, a big news year with, you know, the election year. Uh, you had the Democratic primary earlier in the year. You had impeachment late last year, earlier this year, which feels like a decade ago at this point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so there must have been, like, uh, did you guys have sort of an idea of how this year would shape out and, and that just completely <laughs> went out the window? Yeah, uh, well, we got this, because we got this job in February and Chris and I were like, oh man, we're going to have to make it through the election. That's going to be so hard to get through the election. Like really thinking like, you know what, we'll have an easy spring, we'll ease into this in the summer and then really ramp up in the election. And that was, I think, two or three weeks into our job is when this happened. 
wait, wait. We were thinking about what it would look like to be at the conventions because we were right. like, okay, hey, well, we're going to be in Milwaukee. We're going to be in Charlotte. Yeah. <laughs> and that was going to be the biggest stress of our year was a trip to Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember being so like, but Charlotte though, like I was so... <laughs> You had to wrap your head around. I, I would kill I, to go to Charlotte now. I would kill to go anywhere. anywhere. Because Charlotte's close to my mom. If I could get yeah. somewhere close to my mom to see her across the field, I would be yeah. thrilled. Um, yeah, it, our expectations completely changed. I do think at the beginning of the year, we wanted to be more experimental. And mm -hmm. we talked a lot about that with Sam. Sam was excited to do different things with the show, to try different formats and to play around. And I think we were planning for that and we ended up having to be experimental in a totally different way. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. uh, well, we are still going to get sort of conventions. They're going to be mostly virtual and, yeah. and uh, completely different. Uh, have you had a lot of discussions about how, how the coverage of those are, are, are going to go in the next few weeks? Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, we're we're, I think it's, I think we're waiting to see exactly what happens because it changes every single week. So we just got the rundown of who's going to be at the DNC. So <laughs> that's an interesting collection of people <laughs> that we are definitely excited to make jokes about. Um, and then the RNC, like, God, it was North Carolina. It moved to Florida. It's back to North Carolina. I don't know where Donald Trump is going to be. Is he going to go to Charlotte? I don't know. He is said he, he would accept in either the White House or Gettysburg. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> because of that, it's kind of hard to plan. Um, but I think we're just ready and excited to see what happens. And then we can make jokes about whatever that thing is going to be. And uh, you know, the news cycle moves so fast, and, and this being a weekly show, uh, a 30 minute weekly show, uh, like how, how much is that to, to keep up with? Like how, how close to like a show coming up where like something will happen on Tuesday that you realize you'll need something on Wednesday? Like is that, especially now, is that uh, a challenge or something that you've been dealing with? It's much more of a challenge now. It used to be, you know, on, used to, we'd tape on Wednesday around 5 or 6 p.m. And there were days when there was big news. We'd be writing right up to that 5 or 6 p.m. And now because we have a different edit style and like, you know, um, logistically, like as writers, we could easily do that because, you know, we're writers. All we have to do is type things in fast and then Sam says them. But on the back end, you know, it's much harder. Sam's uploading data from her home. So that's slower than like, you know, fiber optic cable from a studio to an edit bay. Uh, the editors are remote, so that's like longer. So because of that longer tail, um, sometimes it's hard when something breaks Tuesday night or Wednesday morning to address it. But the advantage is now that one of the things we've realized is we might not be able to cover everything that happens, but we can sort of take a very narrow slice of something and explain that really well. And usually that narrow slice as an explainer is a lot more evergreen than like what Trump said that was silly in a press conference. And uh, yeah, go ahead. But I do miss that. I do. Miss I do. That. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're definitely, there's been an evolution where we're talking about issues that are important and that matter to us, that it's also evergreen and, and the changing current of the world. But God, it was very easy to write a joke about something that he said that was stupid on Wednesday afternoon. Right. Like there was that one show where Mitt Romney did something big. It was like one of our three shows that were in a studio and Mitt Romney did something. And we wrote a joke like as Sam was getting to the stage and she said it and it worked. And that's like such an exciting feeling that yeah. we don't really have right now. And uh, you know, with the with the the way the news is, especially lately, it's it can be very dark. And of course, being a comedy show, you're you're balancing this this kind of satirical comedic take with with a lot of the realities that are, are really kind of difficult to kind of all of us to live through and and, uh, and experience. What's it like keeping that balance? Because I know all all especially political comedy shows are, are kind of dealing with that balance in different ways. Mike and I tend to be pretty dark people, so I think that. <laughs> <laughs> we're already dark and so we kind of think certain things are funny and then we have to pull back on them a little bit but to be honest Sam has kind of gone with it like yeah. the, I think the tone of our show has gotten a bit darker this year for because of us because of the pandemic because of many reasons and I think that Sam has been open to that I don't think people come to our show to like have a fun happy like see a musical act well I mean, although we're doing music now but <laughs> They're not here to party. Right, yeah, yeah, they're, they're like, yeah, they're here to, you know, hear something like either explain to them or get a better understanding of a news story that they know is important. Yeah. Um, we just sort of put a lot of sugar into the medicine. Exactly, they're here for catharsis. So I think that it's okay for, like, we can get a little dark and we can get very honest. And, uh, and doing comedy about news for a living, um, like, do you find yourself succumbing to the doom scroll or do you find places of relief 
from that constant onslaught of, of current events and what's happening now? I think the fact that we sort of have each other, especially like Kristen and I, where you can constantly text and talk about it. And, you know, it, it is hard that your job is to process all this news and to have to think about it. Like, you don't have it. We don't have a day where we can just, like, put on Netflix and forget that news is happening. At the same time, because we are working in it, we could be like, man, this sucks. And because the other person knows so much about it, you can talk about it. And it's not like what I have with, like, you know, my parents where I'm like, did you hear about this? And they're like, no. <laughs> you know, it's a little easier to discuss topics. Yeah you can get your way through. And then I think we have our coping mechanisms. Um, Mike loves to buy things. So many things. <laughs> so many toys. So many little toys. My, my, my floor is scattered with Nintendo Legos at the moment and I have no children. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, we have our like little means of escape because it can get really hard. I did get into Animal Crossing very hard, like very many people. And I do think Mike was part of that. Um, yeah, and I realized like the only time I'm going to be outside and fishing or like seeing nature is going to be on Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had that feeling this, this spring. I'm doing a stand-up show in Animal Crossing tonight and that's like the closest I've come to like performing in front of an actual audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what we're, this is the trauma that we're going to be dealing with for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Let's make jokes about it right now. <laughs> and uh, and what the show also has been really good at doing is is finding time for topics that aren't necessarily the thing that just happened, but are are, are really kind of important to what's happening, or or in, in larger ways like you know Reference Man uh, that story, or or mm -hmm. you know healthcare sharing ministries and uh, these these things that people wouldn't necessarily think about at first, and then they mm -hmm. hear about them and they wonder how, why haven't I heard about that before? Like, is it difficult to find those and fit those into everything else in the news cycle? I would say it's almost the opposite is there's so many things we want to talk about that sometimes it's almost like you have to choose like which kid to say where you're like, well, this is super important. Well, this is super important. Um, and to your second question, sort of yes and no, because some stories like healthcare ministries was a pretty evergreen story that like, you know, that's a problem that's been going on a very long time and will continue to be one. But there's sometimes news, you know, like when we do an immigration story where you really want to hit that immigration story when people are talking about immigration or it can sometimes be lost in the noise, unfortunately, which is very sad, like especially now. We also accept pitches from the whole staff, which is a really fantastic thing that I, that makes it, that makes it a lot easier on us. So everyone from graphics, like that healthcare sharing ministries was a pitch from me and Corey Palmer, one of our graphic artists. So like, it's great that we have so many perspectives um, and people who can be like, hey, this is a thing that is affecting me and my family. This is a thing that I'm aware of. And sometimes it's brand new to us. So that's why it's easy. That's why we have so many ideas coming at us is because I feel like our office is full of engaged, passionate people and, mm -hmm. and they're ready to work. So yeah. yeah. And our office too, you know, something that we do that a lot of shows don't is we really let a lot of like almost anyone pitch a topic. Yeah. Um, you know, they might not be able to oversee it or produce it or write it, but you know, you could be anyone on staff and go, e even e interns have, if I'm not wrong, interns have pitched topics where it's just like, Hey, I think this is a good idea. And if it is, you know, we'll, you know, the show will run with it and shape it. Um, it's a really nice system. Cause again, someone who's, you know, maybe 22, who's just out of college, who's at their first TV job has maybe very different ideas about the labor situation on the ground than Kristen and I do after being paid as TV writers for years. Yeah. Uh, you guys are also nominated for producing the short form variety series, uh, Being at Home, uh, that, that, that uh, short form series uh, that really kind of got us used to uh, Samantha Bee uh, out in the woods. Uh, what was it like working on that one? And, and, and did, you, did you know how sort of like it would connect to how you'd be doing the show uh, remotely going forward? We conceived of that the week after. So we were sent home, the office, <laughs> was evacuated on Wednesday and then we weren't quite sure if we were going to be going back into the office or how it would look and I think one of the things that Sam immediately wanted to do was to film outside. Uh, we started to see, we wanted to do something, we were excited to do something and we started to see how other shows were taking it and some were filming from their bathroom, some were filming from like a white void. So Sam like had, she was like let's do something a little different, she wanted to be outside and we started pitching on ideas to see like what we could do um being at home was like the cute idea <laughs> i feel like that we found and then we just started pitching i think a lot of it was based on the things that we ourselves were doing so 
a lot of our ideas had to do with like, how are we going to exercise right now in this weird system? How yeah. are, like, I feel like I was hoarding groceries, you know, mm-hmm. I was like hiding rice. <laughs> and so we made jokes about that. And Sam herself, because she lives in the woods, like she, she like, like chopped wood, I guess. Like that was her thing that she think is so funny. So we were thinking of survivalism. I think there was like that feeling. So a lot of that energy went into those first episodes of mm-hmm. being at home. And it also was our proof of concept that we could do a show from anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I think we didn't know how it was gonna be connected to the show, but once we saw that it was working, that we could do it, we could rely on you know Jason to be the director here and <sighs> natural light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I think once we saw that, once the network saw that, it was our proof that we could keep going. Yeah. And I also think it was something for Sam to have fun with, you know, you know, obviously for Sam, it's hard. She's also, you know, isolated with her family and she's also, so it was a chance for us to also like give her something fun to do while every, while including us, everyone's panicking about how do we do this? How do we do this? How do we make this happen? How do we make a show about the saddest thing to happen in the world, in the entire world? And so this was sort of a small segment of joy that we could put together for everyone. Yeah. Uh, We wrote a weird thing that she's never going to do, which was like, do you remember when we wrote that like, the thing where she drinks her own urine, but <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> so we wrote this thing where she was like, "What about this?" And so we sat down, and started writing, and we had a dumb. <laughs> she gets the system wrong, like the water purification system wrong, and she turns the water into pee. Yeah. <laughs> and I think she took one look at it and was like, "No, no absolutely not." <laughs> that week and 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 certainly like that time was a very big experimental time of us trying to figure out what we were doing and uh you know sort of the million dollar question right now as as the country is in a state of flux at first it was new york was the hardest hit and everywhere else seemed relatively okay and now everywhere else is hardest hit and new york is has been getting better uh so the question of like at what point do do you do you think about going back into the studio or going back into the studio with no audience or like are any of those discussions taking place or is that kind of just a day-by-day thing I, those discussions are taking place but like they're they're always evolving like we you know it's that thing that i'm sure all of us have had where it's like in march people are like all right late april and then in late april people are like okay probably in early june and so it's not like we're being promised things by anyone but you know, our line producer and our EPs keep like looking at the situation. There's like a whole team of like COVID specialists that I, I forget if our show or Jack's or TBS is hired, but like they're going through the process. So the honest answer is we genuinely don't know. I would love to go back to the office because I have also a lot of toys there that I would like to get. Um, but we don't know. And that can sometimes be a little stressful too, because, you know, especially as, you know, Sam shoots outside, as we get to the fall and the winter, we want to make sure that she doesn't, you know, freeze to death. That would be one of our big goals post-election. She's already dealing with, like, bugs and poison ivy. Oh, God, she is. So she's dealing with all of the elements. Yeah, I I think we're open to whatever happens, and I think that the priority is that it is safe for everybody. So, yeah, and the situation is just changing, you know? I, I think there's a reason why New York is doing well, and it's because we took all of those precautions. Mm-hmm. And as things change and get more flexible, I think we're going to see, like, you know, we're I, we're we're permanently traumatized. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I think we're going to see more, and I think we're just trying to protect ourselves and keep, like, the staff safe and, and yeah, and Sam. Yeah, but definitely it's a question where Chris and I were like, what's the studio situation? What's the office situation? We do it, like, every two weeks, so... You know, I think, I, I know everyone wants us to go back. It's just a matter of, like Kristen said, when it's safe. Well, I want to congratulate you again on your Emmy nominations this year. Um, and congratulations on, on just keeping the show up and running uh, uh, to, to the level it has been. Uh, uh, and, you know, keeping it up to the level that it was before, even, even in quarantine. Uh, of course. Thank and you. thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, this is great.